episode 249 with Bethany, Rolando, Rolando, Rolando. A fundraiser at a nonprofit who we know through a mutual friend, but more importantly, are equally obsessed with UFOs. And we are both huge fans of Dr. Stephen Greer's movie and book, Unacknowledged. He was on Joe Rogan, episode 331. And I like it because it's like the least, it's like the least sexy UFO. And it's not, you know, abductions and this, that. It's just a bunch of military officials talking about actual craft in the sky that have military, that have radar returns that affect magnetic, I guess, receptors, receivers. It's just a very, you know, it's a, it's a phenomena and it's real. And I hate it because most people look at it and roll their eyes and say, take off the tinfoil hat or, you know, all right, man, yeah, pass the shrooms, right? But you mentioned it with our mutual friend and I was like, holy fuck. Best friends ever since. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Best friends ever since. And I was like, oh my God, someone that likes this. Because normally I bring it up and they're like, you know, go away and stop talking to me. You brought it up and I was like, oh my God, someone who's equally as crazy as me. But. <laughs> That's probably true. It's probably true. But introduce yourself, please. Well, you already did. I already did, but, you know, I have to give you a chance to. I'm Bethany Rolando, and I'm a fundraiser for a nonprofit, Fair and I'm obsessed with Stephen Greer's Unacknowledged. Yes, exactly. Who, all of his films, I went back and listened to his episode 331, and he's talking on, this is back in like 2012, and please interrupt if, if because I will not shut up. Mm-hmm. He was back, is 331, I think it was 2012, and I've listened to it, not that I've listened to it a hundred times, but he talks about talks about how that the film that he was doing at the time Sirius S-I-R-I-U-S was all crowdfunded blah 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 and then I remember him talking about the next movie which came out in 2017 Unacknowledged that was all crowdfunded and then his most recent movie was all crowdfunded I haven't seen his recent movie yet neither have I Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind yeah how can you watch it is it on any I think it's on, like, on YouTube is it just on YouTube or can you I mean, I definitely didn't buy it the day it came out on Amazon Prime, but it's. I think it's. On, <laughs> I think it's on YouTube now, and yeah. I'm not clacking because I didn't do that. <laughs> I, I haven't. I haven't watched it yet, though. I've had it for like. A, I haven't. I've had it since it came out. It came out right at the beginning of COVID. But I am literally like an evangelist for unacknowledged. I think I've watched it, the documentary, like seven or eight times yeah. right now. Yeah. And I remember one time I was traveling for work, and I was out at a bar eating dinner and I became friends with all these strangers and then I literally got them back they were staying in the same hotel and I got it like up and running like on their tv (laughs) (laughs) I'm like if you could do one good thing today watch unacknowledged and then share that with at least one other person (laughs) yeah it's like it's like butters with the dmv like have you heard the of our lord and savior like that's what it is like can I show you unacknowledged like what is unacknowledged like well I'm happy you asked whip out the pamphlet (laughs) here's some literature but it's (laughs) it's I've I've argued not argued yeah I've argued with myself on it because I'm a psychopath but also with my friend Trey Carney who I've known since middle school we've talked about it and uh, our mutual friend who is very skeptical on it he was like I don't get the point of it and the reason why I like Dr. Greer's work so what skeptical whenever he brought we brought it up I don't remember if it was you or me who brought it up first but then the other of us chimed in and then he was like he was like whoa 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 whoa, whoa, right (laughs) but but he's a perfect example of someone that was like you know okay like i believe like you know the cia does shady stuff and you know there's probably secret cabals but he was like ufos he was like "Uh uh-uh and you know like two normal because people. You think, because if you watch Unacknowledged, you look at thousands upon thousands upon that, not in the documentary, but I mean, they have a whole filing cabinet full yes. of government issued documents. Yes. yes. In acknowledging yes. that Un- there, are, yeah. there is a thing as, as UFOs. Yeah. And this is from people in different countries. It's not just from America. Yeah. And, and the most important thing is it's not people like you and me who are just like, aliens are real. And it's like, well, what is that based on? These are. I mean, they had on John. Ke- I, I had on Larry Holcomb, the author of um, J- um, Presidents and UFOs. In February, I'm having on Dr. Lynn Katai, who Stephen Greer mentions extensively in Unacknowledged and when he was on Joe Rogan. I'm so jealous. It's going to be I awesome. I'm going to hang out for that and just yes, watch it. Absolutely, you can. <laughs> I'm having on Nick Pope in December. I don't, ooh, I wasn't supposed to say that. I was saving that as a secret. Whatever. I'm having on Nick Pope in December, who was the head of the I ministry. Okay, good. Everybody listening, keep it a secret. It's going to be all of our collective secret. It's all of my million viewers, right? 
But Nick Pope is was the head of the Ministry of Defense, which is which is the UK's Department of Defense. Of course, it's a ministry, but their Ministry of Defense. He was the head of their UFO program for like ten years. He's coming on the podcast in December, and I'm saying that to say the these. It's not just Bethany and I sitting here yelling like UFOs are real. These are people that are incredibly, incredibly high up. I mean, the least of, or not the least of which, are presidents. Truman, UFOs or flying saucers, given that they exist, are not constructed by any power of Earth. Jimmy Carter, I know UFOs are real because I've seen one. President Gerald Ford, the U.S. Air Force is doing the public a disservice by not declassifying everything they know about unidentified flying objects. Fife Symington, former governor of Arizona during the Phoenix Lights, March 13th, 1997, who was also a former Air Force pilot, said, well, it's, this is either a highly secret DOD craft or it's an alien craft, and there's no in-between. It's also important to know that these are uh, elected officials on both sides of the aisle. Yes, yes. Uh, or, or, or then not even elected. John Podesta, the head of Hillary's campaign, mm-hmm. he was pushing for UFO disclosure. Senator Harry Reid. And then you have you have guys like, I mean, even on the, Joe Rogan the recently. interview on one of those late night shows, I can't remember if it was Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel, um, not like talking about the expansion of the universe and how Bill Clinton it's yeah. become more and more likely that there is evidence yeah. of other life out there. Yeah. Um hiding it in plain sight. That's yeah. probably one of my favorite parts about the documentary is how the yes. government is really and well, how perfect. they've worked with the mainstream media, which I would really like to get into eventually in this Fuck yeah. conversation. Fuck yeah. Um hiding the whole idea in plain sight. Yeah. And also you see from Hollywood this um like slew, oncoming slew of uh, all these alien movies that come out around that period of time. Mm-hmm. So, but go ahead with what you're saying. Yeah, well, no, it's, but that's, but that's exactly right. I mean, I think I was, I don't remember who I was with. Might have been with my friend Matt in, in Baltimore. Shout out, Matt, I love you. But we were watching some like, uh, shout out, Matt, I love you, Matt. We were watching some, I've known Matt since fifth grade. Matt knows how crazy I am. But we were watching some. <laughs> oh, wait, that was crazy. Yeah, right. I know we're all insane. It was some like, 80s action movie just run whatever but we were looking at them and it was like all these just like nordic like you know like square jaw blonde hair blue eyes guys with machine guns and it was like they're the bad guys and you just knew it watching the movie it's like they're the the hello americans and it was like oh my god the bad guys and then like and then we watched like a we watched like a i think it was transformers 2 which came out in like the 2000s right why the difference between Transformers and Transformers Two, though? Like what? No, 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 no. The first one wasn't Transformers. The first one was like a Die Hard movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then we watched like later that night. We watched Transformers Two because we were having a really okay. productive night and not and we were not smoking pot. And but we were looking at it and like they were made like thirty years apart. And in the second one, they're going to take down this evil bad guys. And it's like, you know, it's like Optimus Prime. He's like, assemble. And they, they drive through some security checkpoint and they blow everything up. What does it say on the bottom? And dee, 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 dee. you know, the words come out and it's like, you know, like unapproved nuclear program, Iran. And, we're just, and we kind of paused and I was like, and we were just, just stoned to fuck. And I was like, isn't it kind of funny how whoever the enemy is at that time, you can tell, 80s, who was it? It's clearly Soviet bloc nations, right? Right. 2000s, who is it? clearly all the guys sitting on a bunch of oil in the middle east and as it goes on you can slowly see it start to shift to what china and it's like (laughs) but so we looked it up and the department of defense no bullshit has a liaison office in hollywood and their incentive is for a movie like say transformers hey you want all these realistic props instead of using shitty cgi right you want a real hummer a real f-22 we'll let you use all that shit for free we'll cover all the cost but if you could just send us your script ahead of time and maybe we make a couple edits and you know make sure that flag's waving nice and well and oh there's a guy with brown skin he's the bad guy and just but there's an actual incentive to do that and it's kind of like what frank zappa said he was like uh i think he said like politics and hollywood are just the enter- entertainment arm of the the military industrial complex like it's all one big uh, corporation and i was like that's fucking brilliant yeah right yeah but that's what it is is you can sort of kind of push this idea i mean we're seeing it right now and so today november 7 16th november 16th 2020 12 33 p.m eastern time right now we're seeing it with big tech and 
but it goes every which way. And one of the way, ones that goes well, even with Hollywood too. So yeah. like you know, celebrities that I've never seen so much involvement with the election, for instance, from yeah. Hollywood as yeah. I have. You yeah. know, trying to get everyone to go out and vote. Yeah. And they've made like their personal mission and they have yeah. these hashtags yeah. that partner with all yeah. of these nonprofits that yeah. are tied to definitely one side of the aisle more than the other. But I mean, this has been going on for a very long time and it's becoming more prominent with the increase in our usage in social media. Yeah. And social media by itself is a huge giant that needs to be addressed. Um, you know, and I kind of go along with Joe Rogan on this and how <clears throat> they're trying to claim that they're a private business, but then they're also trying to seek out help and safety from the government. Yeah. And that's like, you can't cross the two. You can't intersect you can't the two. Both. Yeah. And so if you're going to be a private company, by all means do that. But yeah. if you're going to try to seek safety, um, and then claiming that you don't censor because, you know, Mark Zuckerberg went on the record a few years ago saying that he wasn't censoring anything on one side of the aisle over the other. And then there was a lot of evidence of that actually happening in the years that came from that. Yeah. And, and it definitely is something that the government needs to address and they need to establish moving forward because social media is a huge part of our life and it's becoming even more a part of our life. And it's going to continue to become more a part of our lives. Yeah. Whenever you look at, you know, kind of that video I sent you about like the great reset and mm -hmm. what they're trying to do through the World Economic Forum. And um, so, yeah, but that's me going on a rant. No, 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 it's, it's absolutely true. Cause it's not going back in the box, right? It's not like this is some fad like Pokemon Go or something, right? Where it's like, all right, let it, like this is- You this play is, Pokemon Go? No, I never did, but. So did I played it briefly, but I actually wasn't allowed to play Pokemon growing up. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, we both, both grew up in, in heavy Christian households. Yeah, it's it's right, yeah. it's, 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 it's devil worship, right? But it was really weird whenever it first came out and you'd be walking around the park, like I live in Richmond, Virginia, and you go out to like Belle Isle and then you just see a whole slew of people that are just all together, like in a circle, pre-COVID obviously. Yeah. And they're like just looking down at their phones, just kind of walking around like zombies, <laughs> like trying to catch these Pokemon. And I don't judge those people whatsoever. If you're out and you have the time to go and, and catch yeah. Pokemon, by all means go for it. But as somebody who doesn't play it, it was just really interesting. Yeah, uh, it was, yeah. I remember when I wanted to do stand up comedy in like 2016. Like, you wanted to do stand up comedy? I did. When, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, no, I wanted to. In like 2016, I was so psyched to do it. Right. Just like right when my life was just like pretty much just like off. I was like, I had like one one wheel on the rails and i was just like I, I don't know if that's just like a maybe that's a microcosm stand-up comedy is that my most fucked up point i was like i'm just gonna go talk to people and yeah well, you can go with that you can co it's a coping mechanism too yeah yeah I was mom like, always thought i would actually be really good at stand-up because i'm like i have a very dry sense of humor and i love to pick on myself and other people yeah she thought i would always be really good at that yeah i think that's i was just at like a fucked up point but i remember like one of the jokes i wrote down was like Pokemon Ho instead of Pokemon Go. And it was like, you can finally find those hot singles in your area. And <laughs> like a moron, I was like, this is going to be the joke that brings me to the stratosphere. Yeah. And then I showed up at the place in Athens, Georgia. Shout out Athens. And they were like, you have the wrong day, man. You're up next week. And that was enough for me to be like, well, this isn't meant to be. Fuck this. This isn't meant what? Yeah. No, I was, that was, I'm not in a good spot. I, that's I remember me and my buddy Kirby. I love you, Kirby. I was he was like, I was like trying to stop drinking at that point in my life. This is like summer 2016, and he like he was like I was like let's go back and like play video games and like he was like I know it will make the night better and we like stopped at Taco Bell. We <laughs> picked up like sixty dollars of food. Taco we, Bell is my favorite fast food chain ever, and I've been I was an OG fan of Taco Bell. Like I was going to Taco Bell back in the day. My grandma used to take us when she would watch us and her post office was right across the street. And so anytime I stayed with her, I was like four or five, six years old. We would go to the post office and then we'd go through the drive through at Taco Bell. Yeah. So whenever people talk about, oh, how Taco Bell is so cool, I should have definitely been one of the VIPs when they opened up that like resort down in Florida or wherever it was. Like I should have gotten a ticket. I did it and I was very sad. But go I, ahead. I'm pretty. I'm, all right. Well, I guess I don't like Taco Bell as much as you. But point. No one does. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, just, I, was, I was like, I was like, what the? Why am I going on a Taco Bell rant? Media, social media. Um. But yeah, Pokemon Ho, Pokemon Go. Yeah, but it's. But they talk about to bring it completely back around. But they talk about like the, using 
hiding it in plain sight, right, to keep mm-hmm. people from bringing it up because, you know, it's kind of like 1984. What was you know the party's final command to not believe what your eyes and ears were telling you? There's something along those lines, right? And the CIA, and this is all declassified. Sound like Alex Jones? This is all declassified. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I, <laughs> yeah, you, got, you actually got your impression. Yeah, I, 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 it's all the classified. I'm just saying it's all declassified. Shit, classified shit. You can look it up. I've got. I'm just saying I have good sources. It's if you look at it, it is declassified, especially from like the chief of counterintelligence, James Jesus Angleton, who talked about, hey, we can. Because we can only cover up so many of these UFO sightings. And again, declassified Air Force things, Project Blue Book, Project Sign, Project Grudge, all these things to say, basically, that's where the kind of the trope of like um, Dr. J. Allen Hynek, you know, that was swamp gas, right? And it's in Men in Black, which you saw was swamp gas bouncing off of Jupiter. But they realized there was like, we can only do this to so many cases. And they're happening more and more frequently. July 1952, 12 saucers fly over DC. They scrambled starfighter jets or sabers after them. And they're like, we can only do this with so many things. So mm-hmm. why don't we just come up with a psychological warfare campaign? And that campaign was just ridicule people. And it's worked fantastically. Because, I mean, what's the, that guy, um, that, that pilot for... Um, Japanese Airlines flight, I think, 1628 over, not that I know this, over Alaska, where they spotted that huge UFO in, like, the late 80s, and John Callahan, in unacknowledged, who was, like, the number three in the FAA, yeah, that that pilot was laid off, despite having, like, 20,000 flight hours, and he eventually got hired again, because some professor, um, what the fuck is his name, some pr- uh, professor in the United States, like, made it his mission to get that guy rehired, because he was like, you have a fantastic pilot here but this guy got fired because he was like i'm a pilot like i know what i saw and this was this was a ufo and so there's there is ridicule to where like you people don't want us it's well, and what actually leads me the one thing i don't understand or know and maybe you do is how did you know dr greer get all of these people who witnessed it on his documentary yeah. like are they yeah. i mean a lot yeah. of them are older and so they're probably you know retired in some yeah. sense you know i wonder if they felt or feared for their lives in any capacity after the release of the documentary because the government is not in favor of letting no. people know about this obviously that's the whole point of yeah. the documentary yeah. um and so like do you know or do you have any thoughts on um so i know that he said of for every person for every person that's like in the and also so unacknowledged is like an hour it's maybe i don't know like an hour and 43 minutes long but like Not two hours long right unacknowledged i thought it was is it is it less than two hours i don't know i mean i definitely don't have the exact time like memorized but it's his actual <laughs> yeah yeah i know and it's but so that my bad. <laughs> I no, you know what? That's unexcusable. Podcast over. <laughs> Thank Kick you for showing off. up, guys. The links in the description in the bio. But he actually does have on his uh, YouTube page, um, serious disclosure, is he has all of the witnesses that were on unacknowledged. He has all of their full interviews up, and it's something like. I think it's 35 or 65 hours of all so like in unacknowledged like to agree to do that how did he get him to agree to do that yeah are they agreeing to like protect them or are they just you know risking it is there any is there going to be any fallback are we are they worried about any fallback that's what i'm curious about yeah. like yeah you know or is it because it's unclassified materials that were pretty much discussed in the documentary there really is no. We need an attorney here, like to come and talk to us about this. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, you the attorney. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I know. Really, right? I, that's what I need. Is yeah, I don't know, but I do know. He said for every one of those, he said there were about a hundred that he has video of that said you can't put it out until I'm dead. So he said there's a, so unacknowledged is about one percent of the video he has. So my answer to your question is is. I think 99% of them are like, there's going to be retribution. They're going to fucking kill me. And yeah. one, 1% one were just like, you know, whatever, like big dick energy. Like, I don't care. Come at me, bro. And I don't know. Some of the guys were really old. They were probably just like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. You know? 
patriots in my opinion. Exactly, really. exactly. A very brave person because aliens is not an, an issue that is taken lightly, no. I don't think. And so no. let's go into that because our mutual friend, when we gave him our whole, you know, our whole uh, cult speech. And like, it was so funny how it happened. I can't, do you remember which of us brought it up first? I said something, I think we were talking about, you know, normal conversations, like JFK was absolutely whacked by the CIA because he did, he did, he did you know, a normal Tuesday conversation because he, totally yeah, cause he didn't want us to go to Vietnam and, you know, the military industrial complex was like, fuck that guy, like we want our cash. And he was like, do you really think they would do that just for an energy, like just for like profit? And I was like, well, I mean, think about like the UFO idea. It's all like an energy conspiracy. And he was like, what? And you were like, have you seen Unacknowledged? And I was like, yeah. And he, and he was like, what is unacknowledged? And we were both like, what? And yeah, so our dear friend that we are slowly red pilling, we we're taking we him. Are, we're literally going to red pill him so we are, hard. We have been in the process, for everyone listening, we have been in the process of taking his red pill virginity for the last month. We have just. That's probably true. And it's funny, though, because like the first time we saw him, he was like, do you really. I think he likes it, though. Yeah, absolutely. Likes it. <laughs> He absolutely yes, likes it. Yes, he, well. He's never Don't make se- it seem like bad people. Yeah, he, he's never said no. He he no. He he he'll. He actually asked us the last time we were all hanging out. He said, "I'm I'm still struggling with the UFO thing. Yeah. Can you yeah. guys further explain this to me?" And I'm like, I feel like out of everything that you know, Tommy and I have talked about, like UFOs are like the number one thing that you can totally jump on the bandwagon about. Yes. Because if you watch Unacknowledged, which I don't know if he has, maybe we should just keep he pushing did. that. He but he if you watch it, they present so many government documents. Yeah. Really, it's it's indisputable, in my opinion, yeah. about the fact that UFOs exist, that they visited this planet, that aliens exist. And why? So then the question becomes for me, why aren't we acknowledging it for the public? Yes. And I don't think it's for our own safety. I think it's to protect you know, uh, corporate lobbyists, greed, um, special interest, because we could totally eliminate <clears throat> with energy that they have, which is eons beyond what we have. You know, we could eliminate world hunger. We could have water for everyone to drink. Um, it would just help us progress so rapidly. Yeah. You know, I don't even think we would be ready for how well yeah. we could progress if we were just to, you know, welcome. I don't think they're here to harm us. And I think that's the number one portrayal that Hollywood, the narrative is trying to push out yeah. is that aliens are here to hurt people and they want to go to war with us. But if you look at the fact that they were here on UFOs and just trying to catch, just, like, see what's going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, well, they, I mean, if they wanted to hurt us because of the energy that they have they and the technology it. that they have, I, I feel like they could have done that they would have done a long time ago. Yeah. And, you know, I think that there are other planets as well, in addition to the ones wherever they're coming from, and they might not even all be from the same planet. You know, they're probably trading, inter-trading, interplanetary, planetarily, in- interplanetary plan- trading. Yeah. Okay. They're yeah. doing that with each other. Sure. <clears throat> And so we're missing out on a huge opportunity that could really advance our entire society. Yeah, you know, it's, everyone in the world would benefit from yeah, it. Yeah, it's just it's the, it's just the next level of evolution. <clears throat> and and yet, but then you'd have pharma go out of business. Then you'd have Monsanto go out of business. They would all go out. It would be. It wouldn't even be comparable. I don't think there's any. I don't. Th- I think it's like a singularity. I don't think we can look past what it would be. It's just like this vertical wall of progress. So then they wouldn't want to let that in and because well, lobbying is so heavy up on the hill you know and special interests and everyone has everyone in everyone's pocket there's no way that they would like they're not going to go down without swinging no sure. absolutely not i mean it's kind of like what i had him on yesterday an undercover atf guy vince sheffalo and he and he said in his book you know every once in a while you'd be undercover and like a biker would put a gun to your head and try to get you to like you know crack because your reflex is to like grab your badge and be like you don't want to kill an agent so they have to train to not grab their badge because what would an actual non-cop do? You would just be like, yo, man, why are you putting a gun on my head? Mm-hmm. And then he addressed the the next thing. He's like, and he's like to you, like Mr. Reader, like in the answer to your question is, is, well, how did I not freak out? And it's not that I'm some badass. He was like, I figured by the time they had a gun at my head and I was acknowledging that there was a gun on my head, they would have already pulled the trigger if they were going to. So the fact that I'm now aware of them having it to my head shows that they're not going to do it. And that's what I kind of think of, like, UFOs. It's like, by the time we see them and they're here, like, dude, if they wanted to ice us, they would have, you know, 
like what do we do to like tense and I yeah <laughs> like what do we do to like tense in Iraq? We drop laser. We'd be here probably if they wanted to. Be no, here. exactly. We wouldn't. We like. Think if you're just like a Mujahideen fighter in the Middle East and you've got sandals and a 50-year-old AK in a tent and a laser-guided bomb from above the clouds, probably over the horizon, takes you out, you don't know what's coming. It's just, you're just not there one second. And we're what, maybe 30, 40 years ahead of them technologically? What would a race do thousands of years ahead of us? We just, we just wouldn't be here. So to our mutual friend and to everyone listening is, are you know... I think that there's almost like a straw man argument against aliens because it's like, okay, what, you know, the people would freak out, they'd jump out of their windows, and it's like, no, to me, although there is philosophical implications... I have more faith in people than that. So do I. But I look at, like, how Bob Lazar talked about it on Joe Rogan. He was like, sure, you know, he's like, it's crazy to think, okay, there's another society out there in the universe. He's like, but I'll be honest, like, I didn't really care about that. I just cared about the technology. I didn't care where it came from, right? And it's... That's kind of how I look at it. Is like, that is a whole argument, religiously, philosophically. Every spiritual. single sure. Spectrum. But I try to just so what I try to do though is to the skeptic, I try to bring it down to one level. I'm like, well, let's look at something we do know, right? We know oil companies don't like electric cars. We know that although Florida is the sunniest state, we know that they uh, they uh, they lobby heavily to not allow solar panels there, or they put up a lot of red tape to get them. We know that happened. We know that Dick Cheney's company, Halliburton, made $43 billion in profit off the invasion of Iraq on the deaths of 1.5 million civilians. We know that happens. None of this is a conspiracy. We know that Apple throttles your battery life, so you have to buy a new one. If we know all of that, it's 2008. We know these motherfuckers just take money and just cut people home. They don't care. If we know that. What is the single biggest vice grip they have on the balls of the world? Is our they can literally and figuratively turn the lights on and off. The petrodollar, the fossil fuels, that is they have that over everyone, right? It's like human trafficking. Why do they give these girls like heroin? Because it make them addicted. So even if they want to run away, they can only go like an hour before they're like, I have to get because I'm having withdrawals. I'm freaking out. They have us on the petrodollar. They could shut off your laptop. They could shut off your car. Just the oil shipment stop. We know that's real. So, if something showed up, theology, spirit, philosophical, all that aside of, oh my God, there's another living species. If they showed up from light years away in any sort of meaningful time, we would have to go, okay, there's clearly a power source, no pun intended, that is out of this world for them to get here. Again, don't need to worry about the philosophical implications, but object or or ufo came from planet a to place b that requires a lot of power right what is that power source well if that power source subverts your petrodollar grip on the balls of the world well if you're in charge and you've worked really hard over the last century or two to build up this grip on the world are you gonna are you gonna give it away no Mm -hmm. and that to me that is the easiest explanation for why you're covering it up. When you think about it that way, you go, oh, it's not something that people can't handle it. You're like, oh, no, it's just these same assholes that have been fucking us in the ass every day for the last century. Yeah, this is par for the course. And that, I hate yeah. this because, like, you're giving, I made that claim, and then you've now backed it up with all of these different examples. <laughs> yes, but, but, but like, we know that's the truth, right? I mean, right. think of, like, music industries, right? early 2000s, like LimeWire, it has to go, because it was taking all their money, right? It's not that they cared that, you know, it's not like, we can't have five-year-olds listening to, you know, Lil John, like, you know, to the windows, to the walls, to sweat drops down my balls. It's, no, they're like, we're losing money. To me, that's all it is. It's just, we're losing money. That's all it is, right? So if a UFO shows up and there's some guy like Bob Lazar, it's like, hey, man, we can reverse engineer that and just have clean drinking water for everyone because desalinization of the ocean's water is an energy intensive process. But if we just have limitless energy, right? I mean, why was Eisenhower so obsessed with nuclear energy? Because it would be, quote, uh, energy too cheap to meter. It's just the entire thing is this free power source. So if there's a power source that shows up and is essentially free, well, you got all these guys who their grip on the world is... It's certainly not their personalities. It's certainly not a, a, a product they offer. 
it's, personality. You know, they're not winning us over because they're great, you know, speakers. They're winning us over because when you step out of line, your your country gets destroyed. Right. If someone comes down, it's like, hey, here's the alien battery. Just fucking plug it in. Your house runs for the next thousand generations. Well, now all of a sudden, you don't need to vote for the guy who's taking money from, you know, ExxonMobil or something. It doesn't matter. To me, that's just, when you break it down to that, to me, I'm like, oh, that's like the least sexy most realistic most plausible explanation and rant but right i mean that's that's what i think and again for everyone that's still skeptical don't listen to bethany bethany and i watch unacknowledged go watch unacknowledged watch unacknowledged <laughs> holy shit it's it's i mean it was a five star admiral lord hill norton from uh from the from britain's ministry of defense who's the head of mi6 mi5 they're the raf everything well, even beyond that, though, look at the documents that Dr. Greer brings up, which yeah. are how they're working with mainstream media yeah. to make sure that they avoid yeah. mentioning anything about sightings yeah. or trying. They literally say that they are working with the media to dissuade the public yeah. from looking into the issue. Yeah. But that's I mean, we're all skeptical about government. I don't care about what side of the aisle you're on or not. We're at a place in our in America where. We don't trust government, mm -hmm. you know? Trump's in office, people hate him. If a Democrat's in office, people hate him, and no one is trustworthy of government. And so for me, I think this is the best time for people to be watching something like Unacknowledged because there's a natural skepticism there. Yeah. And so whenever he pulls out all of these files from decades ago, right? Like, I mean, this is not happening. Like, I mean, it probably is happening yesterday, but I mean, this is from like a while ago. Yeah. And, and just talking about how they've had mainstream media wrapped around their finger from then, and then that ties into how government and mainstream media have the relationship into today yeah. and then you look at what mainstream media is trying to do yeah. and no one should be trusting mainstream media either yeah. I, I also don't care what side of the aisle you're yeah. on <laughs> yeah and yeah and you're right <laughs> yeah. into the whole thing with social media and then them trying to seek out safety but then they're trying to operate like a private company but then they're working and, and pushing a narrative i mean it all ties together yeah and I, that's why i ultimately am, am really passionate about it because government has too much power yeah and i don't think it is within their rights to hide something that the public could benefit from that yeah. the world could benefit from yeah. and then you take it a step further and you look at how we're probably not the we're definitely not according to unacknowledged the only government that's aware of this yeah and so yeah. then you look at the fact that all of these governments are working together to hide it from the public all over the world what else are they hiding from the public all over the world that's how my mind works yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. no it's it, no it's exactly it is it's it's kind of like george carlin said he's like it's a big club and you ain't in it like that's mm -hmm. just that's what it is right because you don't want because that frees everyone from under the thumb of the government and not only that it's it's i think they bring it up in unacknowledged i know larry holcomb brings it up that, and that's another insane book um presidents and ufos who's been on here and another one leslie kane how long ago did you have that podcast? Because I think I missed it. I think um, I've had him on twice. And I think both in like the last four weeks. I'm going to go back and, and yeah, watch absolutely. it. Absolutely. I love, I love your guests that you have it's, on your podcast. Thank you very much. They're, they're very fascinating. I can't believe that you just started it last year. And like the caliber of people that you're getting on is very impressive to me. Making me so. blush. Thank you. <laughs> it's, 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 it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely definitely working better than i ever thought i would not to like not sound confident about That's it but reason. yeah i hope so i meant to do i fully believe that yeah and i'm fully going to use this to just it's all a front just to get closer to the ufo <laughs> that's what the whole it's a oh long time it is I would love you forever if that it, were true. It, it is it is absolutely true the long the long long term the long con is hey if there's like an eight decade conspiracy to keep ufo secret well, hey, you got to fight the long con with a long con. So I'm just coming in. Here, here you are. Yeah, right? In the game. Right? In the I, mean, game. I mean, fuck. What, it, what does Joe Rogan do? You can go back to his first episodes. He's obsessed with UFOs, to having on Commander Fravor, having on Bob Bazaar, having on George Knapp, Jeremy Corbell, having on all these guys talking about UFOs. That's what actually got me on to Joe Rogan was, I can't remember which one it was, but it was about aliens and UFOs, and I was hooked yeah. ever since then. Yeah, yeah. And that's so 
now we're kind of getting thrown a curveball though, right? Because we just went on this long rant about why they're keeping it secret. But then this past, I want to say July, maybe June, there was a New York Times article by co-authored by Leslie Kane, the author of UFOs, Generals, and Government Officials, who have tried to get on this podcast, but she said no thank you very politely. But I'm very, podcast. Miss Kane, please come on my podcast. No, I've messaged her a lot, and she has very respectfully said no, so hopefully she, soon. <laughs> but it's... She, she co-authored that New York Times article that Rogan screenshotted and posted on his Instagram that the military or the Pentagon has in its possession, quote, craft not of this world. And that kind of just went under the radar, right? Right. Right. It's right. It's, <laughs> of it's, course it did. Yeah, but it, of course it did. Yeah. Just like also, just like how you sent me an article about what happened in Beirut. No. Oh, yeah. Right. And so that and this is different. This is sex trafficking or human trafficking or allegedly. Alleged. You know? But like that, I totally missed that story. I don't know if that you, was on the front page of any paper or you, like the front you, of any. I, I read the news all the time well, as a part I, of the I, job. I know. Yeah. And so, like, the fact that I didn't even see that story happen, and you were asking me about, you know, what do you think about this and that, and I'm like, I honestly have no idea. The fact that you just sent me this and I've never seen it is blowing my mind. And I need to do research <laughs> before cool. I come to any conclusions about, like, what had actually happened. That, but it's just another example. Yeah. No, that does blow my mind because I was a. It was a huge fucking explosion. I actually got on an EOD tech, Explosive Ordnance Disposal guy, who worked with the Secret Service. I had him on to talk about the Beirut explosion. And I came in and I was like, was it a government operation? Was this black ops? And he was like, I mean, probably not. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and, uh, but he, Darn. I was like, fuck. And, but yeah, he I went really in. I really thought I was onto something there. I know. I was, like, I was like, this is. And he was just like, I mean, uh, no. He was like, there's. And I was like, fuck. But this guy was in the Secret Service and uh, did bomb detection when, like, I think under Bush and Obama, whenever they'd go to, like, China, they'd bring I him up there. I think I heard that episode. Yeah, Will, Will Ellie, Will Ely, he's a cool guy. He uh, he taught me on air how to uh, make homemade explosives from Home Depot. So, well, let's not do that because yeah. we don't want to. <laughs> well, I mean, wave to the NSA because I think that episode really put me on there. On the, he's just like, you got to go and just buy. You got to buy like acetone. You got to buy. And I was just like, all right, just I'm on that list now. Not that I haven't already been, but it's, yeah. But it gets weird because episode 151 with my buddy Trey Carney, we discussed this. And we were like, isn't it kind of weird how there's this story in the New York Times posted by Joe Rogan and it just it kind of just it was like the emperor has no clothes everyone just kind of looked away and I was not Trey and I Trey and I were freaking out and I was like I had him on and he was like did you read it and I was like I read it and we were just <laughs> going back and forth but it does seem weird because that that completely goes in the face of my whole argument that like they're keeping it quiet why would they post it? why would they make that is is it like a chess move in the long con? Because 2020 is so crazy. They're like, let's throw it out there now. and No one's even going to pay attention. So you're thinking that the media is in on it too? So they're like, if we're going to... So is that your assumption? So assuming that media is also in on it, they're like, because 2020 is so crazy, let's go ahead and publish the story and it doesn't actually gain traction. Yeah. Or are you of the mindset that media is not as involved with government dealings at her level necessarily i'm not talking about the executives but maybe as a journalist yeah. you know i would like to think although i am very skeptical about a lot of journalists today i would like to think that there is that there are still journalists out there that aren't a part of the smoke screen like the um the back room mm -hmm. dealings and that they would want to get a story out there if they had the information yeah you know like that's what happened with Amy Robach at ABC News. I mean, she had the Jeffrey Epstein story yeah. for, three years, for three years, and ABC News would not let her put it out there. And, you know, by some way, somebody who worked there caught her on tape in between the segment, and she had talked about everything that she had. And then she ended up being punished. Yeah. And so it's like, on one hand, I totally see what you're saying about you know media and it's kind of you can see it as one and that they're in with the government and i i do believe that but then on the other hand 
I do think that there are journalists out there that are really passionate about journalism and that if they're, if they have a story, they want to be just because you're naturally competitive. I mean, if you're a journalist and you have to break the story first. And so like, if you want to have a career in that, you, you have to be very aggressive in pursuing that. So it's like, I could see it both ways. I could see it where they would want to publish it because they think no one's paying attention because of 2020, but then I can also see them wanting to publish it because maybe it is 2020 and people are paying more attention to the news than they otherwise would have been. Okay. Yeah, and I, I definitely. What do you think? No, I did. No, I, I definitely see that. It's, I think. Well, like, like, did it get, gain traction with anyone else? And what, what on um, paper again was this? This was in the New York Times. New York Times. Yeah, which is why it gets or, hairy. Like, the god of all. <laughs> yeah, which is why it gets a little hairy because it's like, why, why was that there, right? But then, but then we also have the Pentagon acknowledging, uh, Commander Fravers, I guess clear forward looking infrared the like the camera tape of the ufo off the coast of excuse me san diego in 2004 saying that's not ours just the pentagon just saying that's not ours like okay and like you know just but they just that that was the summer so a few months ago the pen wasn't it the pentagon that like admitted that they had seen ufos yeah that's what i'm that's like on my own social media. I know. Said, hey, you know, 2020 is a crazy year. Yeah. When we're the, you know, government's admitting that they acknowledge UFOs and no one is paying attention to it. And it's not getting any coverage on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. Um, and then, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it acknowledge. Yeah. Yes. But that's, <laughs> that's, 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 but no, that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like the Pentagon yeah. just, just, you know, just. Like nothing. Yeah, that's not ours. That's definitely an alien. There's a video of it. That's an alien. And it just kind of... Flew under the radar. Maybe it's cognitive... Maybe no one... Maybe nobody really does give a fuck. Maybe it's not... I don't think so. I don't think that's true. I think you have so many people who are so passionate about human rights and social activism that if they understood what would happen if we introduced interplanetary trade that we like i can i mean i would go out and protest that yeah so would I. I. like i mean it's it helps everyone in the on the entire planet yeah and i understand it's not a strict black and white issue either i'm sure that they would have their wants and needs and then we're trying to present our wants and needs but you know there needs to be a discussion of, of it yeah and i think i have more faith in people around the world that if we made it an open topic of discussion that they could they could handle it i don't yeah. see people going and jumping off buildings yeah. because aliens exist. we're so desensitized to it we've seen how many but hence hollywood and in movies and media and how often they push how many alien movies came out in the last 20 years yeah but like i mean i think that we're desensitized enough to it that we could totally introduce it and for the most part everybody would be okay yeah. with it yeah. and they'd be like okay yeah that makes sense and then okay now let's go to the next level like what do we do next yeah and that's how i think about it yeah i don't think people would freak like we have rovers on mars like we have phones that beam live video into our pockets supercomputers like we know the universe is expanding we you know we watched on live tv as two passenger airplanes hit the world trade center like there's covid like there's for the most part, people are like, that's crazy. Go look at The Great Reset. Like, yeah. you should tell people to go watch that oh, too, absolutely. because I mean, that's something that is put out and you can watch their own videos and it freaks me out whenever they start it's, talking. Because it's about them out. talking. It's not even like yeah, some it's not conspiracy even theorists. Else, like, yeah. Conspiracy theorists talking. It's not me and you. And it's not, I did send you a video, I think, of a guy that I really like and I'm blanking on his name or else I give him a shout out. I'm right. so sorry. Um, but in, he uses their videos and then kind of breaks it down in like 20 minutes. And they talk about, you know, it's we already helped people with limbs and being able to walk again and, and all of this. Think about what we can do. People are so afraid to think, um, to speak freely because they're afraid of like what their thoughts are. And then they just start talking about how they want to infiltrate our thoughts. Yeah, we want to like, create space for free thought. And it was like, bitch, what uh, the fuck did you just say? Yeah, that scare, it terrifies me. Um, I, I really have to pee. I'm going to pause this. I'm not going to make you monologue. I'll pause it. And, and we're back. Sorry, I had to piss because I have the bladder of a pregnant woman or a racing. What's the saying? I have to piss like a racehorse or I have to piss like a pregnant woman? I have no 
<laughs> I've never heard either of well, them. Of course, of course. All right. You guys uh, are weird up in Maryland, but you also have wild horses in Maryland. That we do. We do so have I, fucking yeah, wild Yeah, I was here. telling you about how I went to Puerto Rico and that I saw this horse like on his way to go meet his buddies and that was like the coolest thing ever just to think about the life of a horse that is wild and it's like okay he like goes and eats some hay he goes and meets up with his like girlfriend and then he's like all right girl i gotta go i gotta gotta meet my buds and so then i was driving a golf cart on like down this pathway and then onto the beach and then (laughs) there there were like a whole slew of horses that he eventually like caught up to and was just like hanging out with and they were just chilling do you think I think so. Commander Fravor was on Lex Friedman's podcast. And yeah. They were talking about UFOs and how they were like hovering over water when he saw them. Mm-hmm. I'm just thinking of horses because he was like, what if they were just talking to dolphins? Like, what if we're not like the smartest thing here? Well, I mean, we don't even know anything about the ocean, right? Like, sounds- we can talk about space all day long, but yeah. the fact that we don't even invest enough money into, yeah. we can't even explore the deepest of the deeps yeah. of, of the ocean. Yeah. We only we have, have access yeah. to places like, Antarctica. Yeah. Um, we'd be able, I think, to. to what the fuck is going on in Antarctica? Oh what my is, god. The, what, what, is, what is going on? And, and, and again, <laughs> you know, for every this wasn't an unacknowledged. So anyone that was hoping to just stay on UFOs, now this is your stop. I hope you enjoyed the train. <laughs> you can get off now. For everyone else, you know, put up your tray seats and uh, your tray backs. And from the ceiling are now going to fall tinfoil hats. So put them on. And uh, on, but buckle the, the fuck up, because what the fuck is going on in Antarctica? Dude, I have no idea. It's crazy. I have a thousand different conspiracies running through my head. Go um, into them. But like, it, it's it's astonishing to me that every single country has a flag down there. Yeah. But then they all agree that there's no way to like massively like you can't just. I mean, you can go down there and you can tour it and, and all of that, but you can't get to certain places. Yeah. And. I I always ask, you know, what's going on in those certain places? Yeah, and well, it's the perfect like denied territory, right? I mean, because it's mm-hmm. I, that every country has in common, every, yeah, like, um, major, you know. Yeah, not the North Pole. No one cares about the North Pole. North Pole is just like there's a lot of oil up there, so we're out there like you know everyone's trying to stake a claim. But the South yeah. Pole is like no one will go there, and we all it's like the one thing we can agree on, like we will kill each other at the millions. <laughs> But all of a sudden, we're all just coming together like, well, let's, hey, South Pole, like, come on. You know, we can all be adults. There's an agreement was that, and I'd like to see it. Do what? <laughs> is there an actual agreement written up about it? Cause I, if there is, then I haven't read it. I think there's an agreement that no one will stake a claim to it. That could be I complete know, horseshit. I, yeah, I might be fake news. I, I might be. <laughs> yeah, I might be fake news. Like I said, hey, everyone, that all citation-backed discussion stopped at minute 51. This... <laughs> Okay. We are now, this is now, you know, you are now here at your own volition. We're we're not staying on track. There is no c- citations. Like we say nothing we say. Don't use it against us. There is no citations <laughs> backed up by nothing. This is wild speculation. This is, but you know what? At least, at least we say that because most mainstream news places, they do that anyway and just throw it off as news. At least well, there's a- right? And that's what's crazy to me is that you have actual news outlets that are going out there and they release videos of people moving their lips and you see what they're saying and then they try to discredit it or label it as disinformation. Yeah. But then a lot of journalists, they don't wanna give up their sources, I understand that, but then they just say like our source and then we just take that automatically as truth. Yeah. Or we read the story in the paper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're online. Who reads a paper these days? Yeah. Well, I always get that when I post Project Veritas shit on Facebook. My friends are like, I'll just have you know that he is a, he's a well-known right-wing conspiracy theorist. And I'm like, I don't think so, but let us I'll just humor you. Let's say he is. What is the video of the man's mouth saying? You know, and it's that, who was it, Scott Fogel, who was the guy in 2016? I'm like, yeah, man, oh, like, we, we, oh, yeah, we use mentally ill people to do shit for us. Make no mistake. I remember posting that. Uh-huh. And that was, yeah, that was a guy working on Hillary Clinton's campaign. And I remember that, and mind you, I was still pretty left at that point. But I remember thinking this was two, two and a half years after I lost my brother's suicide. I was like, I was, I was, but this was two and a half years after I lost my brother's suicide. And I remember thinking, I was like, fuck, that's evil. That's pure evil. We pay mentally ill people to do shit for us. Make no mistake. And I remember posting that. And one of my friends was like, dude, uh, James O'Keefe is a, is a fart. I didn't know anything about him at the time. And I was like, that may be true, man. But I remember I was like. But I was like, if you could, just, if you could just go to, you know, timestamp four minutes and eleven seconds, what is the man in the in the video saying? 
But yeah. I'm just saying it, they, they edit and I'm like, what is he saying? What is right. that man saying? Think if I sat here and just started screaming the N word and saying, kill all Jews. And someone said, well, okay, but you know what? CNN aired it and I'll have you know, CNN's pretty left. They'd be like, what did Tommy say at this timestamp? <laughs> Out of context or not. Well, that wouldn't say, happen, though. Nobody would look at CNN and say, oh, that's too left. Well, that's and, what I'm saying. Like, don't pay attention to it. If it and, comes out on CNN, if it comes out on, you know, any mainstream media, um, then it's pretty much just taken as yeah. the truth. Yeah. And that's my plea to people and anybody watching is, you know, there is a love hate that I have with technology and, and social media and the Internet. But one thing that it has done is given we the people, the power to go and do our own research. And you can, you know, there's a lot of fake stuff out on the internet too, but you're smart enough to like go and, and read it and and decide for yourself um, what actually is true and what isn't true. Yeah. And you know, we, we really as people need to harness that to our advantage. And that comes with any topic, not just aliens or not just Antarctica yeah. <laughs> or not yeah. just you know, whatever video James came out with, um, that that's for anything. Yeah, yeah, and it's that's one thing I always think is like people that think like that needs to be censored, and it's like why? And so like, because people might believe it, like that right there. I'm like, do you, Dick? You're not, you're we're, not we're the babysitter. Yeah, we're at a precipice. I guess is that the right word? Where impasse, precipice, crossroads, crossroads, where we have to decide do we want to help people think for themselves or do we want to free people to where they can come up with their own conclusions and i know government doesn't want that they want sheeple is what i call them people who you know if you're driving down the road and you get to a stoplight and you see like six cars in one lane and then the other lane is totally empty and it's like, you know, I'm like sheeple. They just follow along, you know, just, why not just get in the left lane? There's less cars in the left lane. Yeah, yeah it's just. <laughs> or right lane, it can be vice versa too. Yeah, but it's, right, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's listen to what, well, they said that it's not real or this didn't happen. And it's like, like, but who said that? Like, I always look at it as like, you know, well, so-and-so, you know, well, Snopes said, and I'm like, dude, Snopes is a guy and his wife, no different than me. And that'd be like if you and I started a call, we just, we call it. Who's back checking Snopes and who made them the guy? That's like going to Wikipedia and colleges yeah, don't yeah. even let you, for the most part, use Wikipedia as an information source. If Snopes was like Einstein, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and like Carl Sagan, and they had like a whole like panel of like researchers and they live streamed their fact checking, okay snopes is just a guy and his wife that's it it that's i could make something called popes that, i'd be like well you know you check Probably Snopes. because yeah, popes yeah. is like an actual like yeah well be like you could you could just check to, well okay fuck it tommy's podcast well uh tommy's podcast said that there's election fraud so and what's the first thing well that's just the guy's podcast exactly it's just snopes it's just cnn it's just fox news like these these people aren't like they're not a cut above like they're not you know sure i respect them for building like a multinational corporation like sure, i'll respect the game that's the same point they're doing great yeah right but they're they're just they're just people like they're mm -hmm. just people like they, they go home and they like yawn and like look in the mirror like pop a pimple like take a shit you know go home and you know lay in bed and they're just like oh i don't want to do this tomorrow they're not some like almighty like you know <laughs> deity and like a high pillar on top of the mountain like i will tell you truth my child like they're just fucking assholes like you and me and so mm -hmm. if you can say snope said well Speak for yourself <laughs> <laughs> like me not like you it's it's i guess know, i can't be sometimes <laughs> no it's but you know it's but and it starts so it starts so slowly with we can't have Alex Jones yelling and ranting because it's dangerous to the population. Oh my God. So that is why I love Joe Rogan so much. And we're giving him all these shout outs. I don't know if you can link it down in your description for Joe Rogan. And I, don't, the Alex I, don't think Jones. He, I don't think he and, needs my help. And that's true. But he actually says whenever he brings Alex Jones on, he's like, you know, we're friends and I get a lot of hate for being friends with you, but you say a lot of things that are true. And Alex struggles with 
his strategy of getting information out there. And I do think he's incredibly obnoxious. Yeah. But I mean, there were things that I was looking into that Alex Jones was like exposing back in the day. I mean, I like they talked in that last podcast about, you know, um, I'm not going to call it the brewery like I did the other night with you guys. Uh, Bohemian, Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove, yeah. And, yeah. And so, like, that was actually something that I was looking into. And then I found – I was looking into it after Alex Jones released it. But then I found his uh, video about it and, like, the news that he had, like, released. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, Alex was literally ahead of yeah. the curve. Yes. Yeah. And he – but because he is – he doesn't – and it's hard as someone who claims to be – I don't know if Alex – claims to be a journalist does he claim to be a journalist i don't think so but you know it's hard to i'm draw a red-blooded the american how much do you yeah <laughs> i know you've got that down <sighs> how much do you care about what the public thinks of you versus just getting the information out there yeah. and he's clearly built a following of those that are on the right um even though he claims to not be because he was actually very anti-bush and was, i was very yeah, anti-bush he was incredibly anti-bush that's the thing right. as was i though yeah as was i yeah um and so like he <clears throat> i think it's interesting that joe brings that up and i'm glad he brings that that talking point because i think it helps alex amongst like the people the millions of people that listen to joe rogan in terms of you know joe gets in trouble for being friends with them but he's friends with them anyways because you know he's a I think he's probably an, a good person, yeah. but like also the stuff he puts out, there's a lot of stuff that he puts out that is legitimately true. Yeah, and, and because always, he's yeah. discredited by a lot of people, no one pays attention to it except for his followers, and he's not given a lot of weight. But he, I mean, he's ahead of the curve on a, a lot of this stuff. Yeah, and it's it's very easy to discredit him because you just gotta pull up a clip of him being like, you know, interdimensional aliens are here, they're sucking the life energy from our kids. I'm telling you, Joe, I know there's a post human era coming. It's very easy to look at him and go, This guy's fucking crazy. But then you Well go, then that's also something that like you have to ask yourself too. Like if you're gonna be like a professional podcaster, which you should, you're really good at this. Um, you know, how much do you want to care about what what people think of you versus you actually saying, and I know you have zero cares in the world, but, you know, and Joe Rogan's able to get away with it. Alex Jones is able to get away with it, but with really only the right side of the aisle. And so that's something that you're going to have to consider as you start to gain more followers and gain more traction. Um, you know, how much are you going to care versus like what you put out? It's just, it's, it fascinates me. Yeah. It's like inside of the business and like how all of that works. Yeah. No, I don't, I, I, I don't care at all. And it's not even some <laughs> edgy, like, you know, I mean, I'm very open that I lean more right, but I'm also open that I voted for Obama and then I voted for Romney and right. then I voted You're for left, Bernie. And that is just like, I don't know if I Twice. missed the story, but you're going to have Twice. to tell me a little bit on. I voted, for, I voted for Obama when I was 18 in high school because it just Why? seemed like a good idea. I don't know. I was 18. Like a good idea. Like a good idea. I, hey, man, I'll give him. I'll give credit where credit's due. He's a good speaker, and I took a hook, line, uh, and sink it. Half black president. Was yeah, I, I didn't give a shit. I was like, fuck yeah. It was, I was I was Randy Marsh from South Park. I was like, oh, but Drake. I was like, it's gonna be better, Stan. Like that's what I was. Just admit it. That's what I was. Twenty twelve after being pre med. Because of Bush, though, was it because of like? I, I think so. Yeah, probably like, yeah, because that seemed objectively bad. It was like we aren't supposed to be in Iraq. Like. Even as like a 15 year old, I was like, why are we in Iraq? Like, and then 2008, the financial crisis. I remember I was really, the primary reason I actually voted for Obama is I can remember now, this is when I first kind of getting obsessed with like biotechnology. This was like two years before I decided I wanted to be a doctor. And I was really interested in like stem cells. And like, I was like a one issue voter. I was just like, one guy wants to make it legal to do research on stem cells and advance, uh, advance medicine. And I looked at it as sort of like American exceptionalism. I was like, I hated that, you know, like Germany and France and China were getting ahead. Of, and that was legitimately like 16 when I was like reading all this. And I was like, why aren't we at the forefront? And that's what I wanted. I was like, I just wanted to see stem cell research. And I, that's why I voted for, I can honestly say that's why I voted for Obama. And in 2012, after being pre-med for like three years, just studying nonstop around the clock, I was like, I like, I want to help people. But I was like, dude, I like, I want... I also want a huge paycheck like that's what's getting me through this and I had two uncles who were surgeons and they both said and they were like if you know like this is going to make your life hell on earth and when a bunch of not other people are going like it's going to be great when a bunch of like lifelong physicians were telling me like this is going to be hell on earth I just remember thinking I was like I don't I was like fuck that 
And so I voted for Romney solely because I was like, I don't like the idea of Obamacare. I vote for Romney. Yeah. And then, I vote for party. Well, that's because you're a cool person who actually has, yeah, deeper and more All consistent. All are going to be like, wasted a vote. Wasted a vote. <laughs> fuck off. Vote for whatever fuck I want, you know? Eat a bag of dicks, you dirty commies. But in 2016, I was at a, in a really bad place in my life. It was two years after I lost my brother to suicide. I was doing... And smoking a lot of weed and doing a lot of psychedelics and not a lot four times but that's i mean not i'm not even trying to like throw shade at bernie like I, but that's why i voted for him because i was just like light like i just you know maybe there's some truth in that i was in like the worst spot in my life and i was like like i need help and i moved home and as i started to get my life back to and i didn't vote in the presidential election in 2016 it was that was right when i moved home and i just wasn't in a good spot and then as I sort of started, you know, getting sober over the next coming years, losing weight, not all of it, but losing weight, working hard at graphic design, working hard on this podcast, I started to kind of become like pre-med me again. I started to, you know, no one's going to give me anything. I have to pursue. I have to go take what I want and I'm going to get it, but I'm not going to let anyone stand in my way. And that's I just started resonating with Trump. And I know it's like, you know, oh, you fucking Nazi. But I was like, look, like, yeah, sure. He's an asshole. He's got an ego and a half. But I was like, I just don't think there's anything wrong with putting your country first, just like France should put France first. And China, I hate him. China should put China first. Right. It's because to me, I'm like the big thing that happened to me at that time in my life was self-love was like, I'm like, I'm not a piece of shit. It's not my fault my brother killed himself. And I was like, and it's not my fault, you know, friends around me aren't happy. Like, I need to take care of me. So on a bigger scale, I was like, America needs to take care of America. Canada needs to take care of Canada. Like, because it's, it's, I mean, it's like an airline, right? When the emergency oxygen drops down, please fix your mask before anyone else. Because if you pass out, you can't help anyone. But if one person in the plane gets their mask on, they can put on someone else's mask who can do another person and it can take off. But if, no, if everyone tries to help everyone else, we're all going to pass out and we're going to die. So that was my mindset was like, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking care of America. Like Trump says a lot of crazy shit. And yes, I'm like the surface. I think he's funny. The memes are great. But I mean, ultimately, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with like his second day in office. He scrapped the what was it? The TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which, by the way, the left and as a lefty at that time had been screeching against for four years as it was in the pipeline. The Trans-Pacific Partnership Act, Hillary Clinton, a, a hemispheric Western open market without borders. I was like, that's objectively bad. Like, I don't. And so I was just like. Get it away. Get rid of it. I don't think there's anything bad. We're going to bring back troops. Oh, but we're the Kurds. The Kurds. I'm like, no one, you didn't know who the Kurds were yesterday. But now that Trump is saying, I'm like, I don't, because look, we can keep our troops there and they can die or we can bring them home and these people can die. It's cold, but someone's going to die. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stand by what I think. Bring them home. I don't give a fuck. I don't get in what George Washington don't get caught up in foreign affairs. And I know the world's a lot more complex now, but still. So there are some things that. I, it's the why I voted for Obama are the same things why I voted for Trump. And that's the truth is I was like, hey, let's put all because what was Obama? It's like, we're going to put money in again, stem cells. I don't care what anyone thinks. We're going to do this so we don't fall behind the rest of the world. That's just another way of saying America first. That's just he said hope and change. But that's another way of saying make America great. I'm going to shut Guantanamo. He didn't do it, but he said it. And to me, I'm like, that was, I'm like, what? He didn't do it, but no, he said he, it. No, he didn't. But still, I'm, I'm, I'm justifying his, my draw to him. I'm going to take us out of Iraq. I'm like, good. We spent $5 trillion over there. We don't need to do that. These are all the same reasons why I voted for Trump a week ago, or the same reasons why I initially voted for Obama. So to me, I'm like, that's, so that being said, like, that's my whole like left and right jump. So it's, when it comes to circle way around to your question, my idea of how am I going to go forward doing a podcast to me it's very simple I'm going to say what I believe in and I try to have on guests that challenge my beliefs so that I don't become rigid and calcified in my position and ultimately at the end of the discussion even if we're at each other's throats agree to disagree man agree to disagree what a great country we live in that we can say that right? my yeah. buddy Ernie who is the antithesis of me me white skin looking like an Aryan from New England Republican Ernie dark skin from Mexico immigrant who worked in the Democratic Party like but we also used to drink vodka together in college and play Mario Kart and we're still friends and we text each other and we get heated sometimes 
but we always text her. I'm like, love you, brother. And he's like, love you too, man. Like, you know, keep working on the podcast. I'm like, I hope you're like, you know, I know your dad's sick. I hope your dad's doing better. I am, I love having people on like that because at the very least, the fact that we can agree to disagree to me is amazing. The fact that Kathy Griffin can hold a severed head of Trump. I'm like, you know what? God damn, no other nation in the history of the world are you allowed to do that and not be put, put against the wall. And it's terrible and it's offensive. Snoop Dogg has a video where he kills Donald Trump. Offensive and terrible. God damn, there is no other nation in the history of the world as progressive as us that would allow you to do that. And the reason why I am currently what you would call right, even though I don't think my position has changed in the last decade and a half, is because I want our right to agree to disagree. And right now, there is one side that doesn't want you to agree to disagree. Say this or you get canceled. Ice him. Shut him up. He's a Nazi. He's pariah. He's not allowed to have a job. Fuck him. Destroy his property. Dox him. Put a mask on. Scream anti-fascist and beat him with a bike lock. Fuck that. Two things. One, I don't think I can say anything else until I feel better now. (laughs) I don't think I can say anything else without acknowledging the fact that I think you're a very strong person. You've been through a whole lot. Thank you. And so, yeah, I just, I give you so much kudos for that and coming out on the other side and for not even being on the other side, but like wanting to to be here for a better and higher purpose and to add value to to other people and to help other people. And I think that you're going to do that. And so like, I just, I commend you for that. Two, you should watch the hidden agenda. I think I've texted it to you like a thousand times, but um, it's a really great documentary and it's very boring, but it was the guy who actually, um, and I'm blanking on his name too, I'm the worst. um, He came up with the red pill convention and he's the guy who's the author of Jekyll Island. And it talks about, you know, the federal reserve Mm -hmm. and, and all of that. But he goes into how one political party was infiltrated by the Communist Party, whenever the Communist Party found out it wasn't going to make it as a party of its own, you know, here in America. And so I think it's a really great educational um, tool kit for you. And I'm going to keep annoying you about it until you watch it. Please so do. you just need to go ahead and add that I'll, to your list. I will do because that I do think that there are people who, the majority of people who are involved on one side of the aisle or the other are very good and genuine people who want to help their fellow man and one side thinks that it's you know with less government and then another side of it is they think is with more government that's why i also recommended to you like um a trigger warning killer mike Mm -hmm. is because if you look at without mentioning political affiliation if you look at the exact issues me and killer mike agree on like almost everything and that isn't like it's so funny but then he talks about getting government involved and me personally i'm like well no government doesn't necessarily make everything better we need to give more power back to the people um and handle it from that approach but we still want the same yeah. exact and so I, I can totally see you know you going from like one side of the aisle to the other I mean what I I couldn't vote for Obama in 2008 I was not old enough <laughs> but in 2012 I couldn't vote for Obama or Romney because I thought that they were both two sides of the wrong same, point yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. so like I just you know that's why I went third party because I, I really try to vote on on principle and, you know, I did not think that Donald Trump was going to be the nominee for the Republican Party. Not at all. There's no way I thought the establishment of within the Republican Party was going to allow that. Um, I thought it was going to be Marco Rubio. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, that's who I thought it was going to be. Um, and would I have voted for Marco Rubio? Probably not, if I'm going to be honest. Um, so the fact that Donald Trump got to where he was from, like, got to where he is now, like, from where he was, is a big question mark for me. I mean, we can talk about like kind of how that happened from the, from the jump, but I totally agree with you in the fact that he kind of came in and said, I don't care about whatever's going on. You know, we have to get America back on track and we have to put America first and people can say anything they want to about his personality. Would I necessarily want to hang out with him? Probably not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. We can say like whatever we want about his 
own ego um, and his motivations for what he's doing. It could be for his own self-interest. I actually think that that's not even a legitimate argument. You can be in for your own self-interest or not because his own self-interest are also still for the betterment yeah. of the important businessman, yeah. and the majority of the you know economy here in America. And so, yeah, he could be in it for his own selfish interest, but he's actually helping make the economy better. And we've seen nothing but, you know, like the minorities um, and, and un, un, unemployment has gone down more than any other administration. In and history. like I mean, he's breaking records left and right. And not only that, he's kept a lot of his promises that a lot of other people have not. You know, yeah. I would say like double the amount, nope. <laughs> maybe even triple the amount of promises. No new wars. I mean, right. holy fuck. I mean, how low can our bar be? But there it is. No new I'm wars. I'm really disappointed to see that there was not a lot of uh, mainstream coverage on the the peace deal. Of yeah. The Middle East. And I know that no one thinks that there will ever be peace in the Middle East. And that could be true. That could be true. However, when is the last administration to actually put forward a document that these countries have signed to where they agree to peace? Like, how long ago was that? Yeah. And you know, ask yourself that question. So and there's no coverage of that. There's no coverage of that. Mm. You, none. None. Like, none. yeah, and there's this weird. It's 141. I'll keep you for a couple more minutes. Okay. There's this weird. Like, you can't admit anything he does is good. Like, he's not allowed to have one. And to me, that is like a stalemate that at the very get go. Like, well, then we can't progress past that. If we just. Everything Orange Man does is bad. Like, why? He could lay off the self-tanner a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, he looks like a fucking moron. Like, let's just be real. He looks like a moron, dude. But you actually, so before we go on to Trump any longer, because I really don't want to talk about Trump okay. that much. Okay. Just because I talk, like, I just don't want to talk about yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. I, the I election's got you. going I got you. on. I got you. I got you. I got See, I was just like, I feel the worst for Melania Trump because Melania is gorgeous beautiful self-made knows how many different languages five or six different languages has taught her son the same he knows multiple languages and she is, has stood by his side and they chastise her and demonize her and refuse to give her anything like she doesn't get front front page of yeah. you know vogue magazine or any of these girly magazines that people like me like to read you know they did that for michelle obama i mean hillary clinton think about like what she actually put up with with bill clinton and you've interviewed um juanita broderick who i am a big fan of and like hillary still stood by his side yeah and media still defended yeah. Bill Hillary I'm Clinton. I'm defending my man. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah. And they had Hillary's back on that. And then with Melania, they literally just demonize her and make her look so negative on, on, in every angle. And she, one, didn't ask for any of this. She wasn't trying to be in political office. I'm like Hillary Clinton, that has made it her life mission, <clears throat> starting as a Republican and then going towards the Democratic Party and then being married to Bill Clinton would, I think, just to stick it out so that way she could run for president. Yeah. You know, Melania is the opposite, the antithesis of that. And so I just, I hate to see her being drugged through the mud over something that has to do with her husband whenever I think she's handled herself with grace and dignity and she's still out there and she's really big on helping children. And, you know, she, I just, I am such a fan of Melania. I think that she's just a boss Yeah. and she doesn't go out and she doesn't say anything negative about anybody. She just sticks to herself. She does what she stays in her lane. She does what she does. And I think that she's an example that every single woman can look up to because if you're a woman working in a professional world, you know, you, you're going to have to deal with a lot of, a lot of stuff that comes your way, yeah. um, you know, believe it or not. And so like, she's somebody that I think should be an example over somebody who's like a Hillary Clinton or even Kamala Harris. Um, so there's that. No, yeah. It's, you're right. Is if she was any other party, she, <laughs> no, if she, no, I agree with you. If she was any other party, she'd be painted as like you know the 2020 yeah. Jacqueline Kennedy. Immigrant, the, isn't yeah. she the first immigrant like first lady I don't know for sure so I don't want to say yes or no Actually, yeah no let's just but I mean yeah I mean and then not only that if you can see like attacks on her and you go to any YouTube video or any reddit post or any Facebook post or like any comments and it's always like this bitch can't even like she has like she can barely speak English and it's like, <laughs> like how quickly the tables turn 
right? Well, yeah. you're anti-immigrant, and then she's like, I love like America, and they're like, oh, she can't even talk, and it's like, Jesus Christ, right? I know, I mean, and so it, it makes me very upset. <laughs> how is that not the American dream? You taught yourself six languages, and you married the president, right? Yep, and she was a career. She had her own career. Yeah. I mean, she was it's, making it. She married Donald Trump, you know, and I don't know her motivations for that. I'm not going to claim to. It could have been for love. It could have been for something else. However, she yeah. married who she married, yeah. and like she's sticking by him and she's supporting him. And I think that she's like such a good example of somebody in her position that any little girl should look up to. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, let's wrap it up on that note. One forty-five. I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's she, I think <laughs> I think that was a perfect. That was a perfect podcast. Everything from UFOs to Melania to Antarctica, which we are going to do uh, another episode purely on Antarctica, and that will be that. I call what? <laughs> Who are you doing an episode on Antarctica with? You. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was like, You're, no one else, no one else is going to have this conversation with me, but you are. I so will we, happily do that. We should both wear like. Uh, both, Tinfoil hats. No, that I was going to say, or just like the like. Like um, fuck, what word were like Eskimo jackets? Eskimo jackets. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, parkas. Parkas. There we go. My brain's frying. Yeah, es- <laughs> Eskimo jackets. Yeah. We've been talking for a very long time. We have been. Thank you for doing it, man. Thank you so no, much for doing yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. I for... hope you had fun. Isn't it a blast? So much fun. I know. I know for sure. It was so much fun. All right. Well, You're a good person to talk to. Thank you. Hold on. I'm gonna and wrap this bitch up.